Thanks, um, Minister. On behalf of Megan Halvey Ryan and her family, I'm appealing directly to you here in Dunlair to intervene in her case, which was highlighted last night. Megan is 13 and suffers from scoliosis. The curvatures measured 83 degrees on her top curve and 65 degrees on her lower curve. She has a very high degree of rib rotation, which means her internal organs are being squashed. Her consultant says she needs surgery immediately, and she's still on the waiting list. She can't attend school. She has problems eating and breathing, and this is due to her uh, rib uh, configuration due to the um, condition. She has poor quality of life. She's on medication to get through the day and to sleep at night. It's two years since her diagnosis. She's 18 months on the waiting list. She's on the list in Crumnall. Uh, can you please, Minister, get her the care and the procedure which she needs as soon as possible? Her consultant you, has requested it from the private sector, and I think you have the wherewithal to arrange Thank it. You. That's Minister, the appeal on behalf of Megan and her family. Thank Minister, you. you have four minutes. Thank deputies for raising this important matter and for giving me the opportunity to address Dáil Éireann this afternoon. One of the things the programme last night showed is that I am far from the first Minister for Health to be trying to address the issue of waiting lists. So I recognise it's an issue of great concern to all parties and none in this House. And I continue to believe that improving our health service requires an all-party collective effort. However, what the programme last night really brought home is the genuine pain and suffering of patients who are waiting far too long for treatment and the impact this has on their lives and indeed on the lives of their families. I said I was ashamed, and that wasn't just a word. I meant it. It is simply wrong. How can anyone watching that programme not be ashamed? But it's not good enough for me to just be sorry or for me to say we feel ashamed. What are we going to do about it? And that is why I have begun unapologetically targeting resources at the specialties with particularly long waiting lists, like scoliosis and orthopaedics, and at treating those patients waiting the longest, something that didn't always happen. Over 50 additional children and teenagers with scoliosis were treated with funding made available from the Winter Initiative. But I recognise that this has not been enough for children like Megan, like Kira, and like Dara. However, the additional investment did achieve progress for those children and young people waiting over 18 months. 18 months is obviously a completely inexcusable length of time for children with this condition to continue to wait. We also made progress on the overall waiting list of over 18 months. And this was done in 2016 with limited additional funding and with a limited timetable. But now we have to do more, and I am going to make sure we do more. I've just come from a meeting with the CEO of Crumlin Children's Hospital and the CEO of the Children's Hospital Group and the Director of Nursing. And I'm pleased to inform the House that from April, the new theatre that was built and put in place for the purpose of scoliosis will open that this will see 194 spinal procedures carried out in Crumlin, significantly more than last year, and this will see significant reductions in waiting lists for scoliosis and waiting times for scoliosis patients. At the end of this month, I will receive from the HSE and the Children's Hospital Group an action plan for scoliosis, and I will engage with all parties and none in this House and with advocacy groups in relation to that. And in addition to that, by June, we will have an additional orthopaedic post filled within Crumlin. So we are responding to what we saw last night, which was unacceptable and needs to be addressed. And everybody in this House highlighted there were lots of issues in that programme last night that need to be addressed. The issue of scoliosis in our children and the length of time they're waiting is not acceptable. That theatre will open in April. It will open as a result of the nurse recruitment. An extra orthopaedic post will be in place by June, and we will see at least 194 procedures carried out. Also, though, we are going to have a priority initiative on scoliosis as part of the HSE's 2017 Waiting List Action Plan, with the aim of every child being treated within the clinical time frame. And if that means outsourcing, that's what we're going to do as well. We are going to eliminate the day case waiting list for, of over 18 months by the end of June for all day case procedures through the NTPF. This will see over 2,000 patients begin to receive their treatment from March. The HSE's action plan, which I will receive at the end of this month, will work in conjunction with the NTPF to utilise capacity within the private sector and to maximise capacity and coordination within and between hospital groups to treat the patients waiting the longest, and this will be supported by a further €10 million Euro for the NTPF. I expect the action plan combining these measures to be complete by the end of this month and for patients to begin being treated under this plan by March. 
These measures are to support us moving towards a position where no patient waits for any procedure or any hospital appointment longer than 15 months by the end of October. Still too long, but progress. I have also today, and I beg the indulgence of the House, I have also today directed separately that the NTPF will audit the practices in the hospitals highlighted by the individual cases featured in the programme last night. It's very important that the lessons are learnt, and it's very important that the NTPF carries out its audit function to see exactly how each of those cases was dealt with in each of the hospitals. The NTPF is already undertaking a review of best international practice around waiting list data publication models, and I look forward to that work being concluded. But let me be clear when people ask about these waiting lists. This is the waiting list situation and the waiting list model that's been in place since 2002 under six ministers for health and five successive governments. Right, didn't alter you, and it didn't change. Maybe I do say things are unacceptable too much, but I say them because I mean them and we're going to work to fix Thank this. You. Minister, I, I want to keep my comments uh, solely focused on the case of Megan Helvey Ryan, and others have raised broader issues, as you'll appreciate. Can, can you, Minister, if possible, give me a commitment as to when uh, Megan Helvey Ryan will receive the procedure that she needs? Uh, will it be done through either the public or the private or the NTPF uh, system? You'll appreciate that uh, many of the uh, people who participated in the RT Investigates programme last night uh, subsequently had received their treatments and their procedures. This isn't the case uh, with Megan Helvey Ryan, um, whom uh, I know because she's from Limerick. Uh, so I'm specifically uh, making the case for her directly to you here in Dáil Éireann, and I would appreciate if you could reply to me today, or if not, if you could write to me as soon as possible and let me know when exactly she will receive uh, her much-needed procedure. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Collins, I'll ask the CEO of the Children's Hospital Group to revert to you directly in relation to, to, to Megan's uh, situation, because she'd be better placed than I um, in relation to that, but I'll arrange for that, for that to happen. I agree with Deputy, uh, Deputy O'Mahony Murphy in relation to utilising our smaller hospitals, and that's why I said in my reply, part of the HSE's plan for this year has to be about hospital groups, where some of our larger level four hospitals are busy. There's no reason why we can't see more elective procedures done in the other. I expect that to be a feature, Deputy, of the HSE's waiting list action plan, which we will publish uh, at the end of of the month. In relation to issues like cataracts, Deputy O'Dowd, these are part of the 2,000 plus day case procedures that will be done with €5 million Euro worth of funding from the NTPF, which will start in March. In relation to CUMH, you're exactly right. I spoke about this myself uh, yesterday as part of the Clare Burn programme. I am concerned about what's happened in CUMH, and I've asked the new director um, of maternity services, the clinical director, to report to me on that matter. I am going to publish an action plan for scoliosis, and I'll take what Deputy Aylward says on board in that context. But we are going to publish a plan for scoliosis that is going to take on board the concerns of the advocacy groups and is going to dramatically reduce waiting times and waiting lists for children and teenagers in this country from scoliosis. That's what we all want to do. That is what I'm going to make sure we do. And if that involves outsourcing, we will do that also. I have asked the NTPF deputy to audit the practices in each of the hospitals that featured in the RT Investigates programme. Go in and use their audit function and check exactly how that waiting list procedure was dealt with. Was everything done correctly? We saw one case where there was a clinical note that that child didn't then go on a waiting list for a period of eight months. That's not acceptable. What happened there? I look forward to the results of that NTPF audit, which I have directed today. Deputy O'Mahony Murphy, in relation to performance and accountability, I do believe managers have to be accountable. I'm the Minister for Health. I set policy and I provide funding. I then expect our managers to get on with doing the job, and I've written to the Director General, as you know, asking how do each of our managers right across the health service measure up in relation to performance and accountability, not just on the financial side, which they're good at measuring, but on the access to services side. And Deputy Barry, in relation to the lists, this is the same way the NTPF has calculated the list since it was set up in 2002 by the then Minister. There's nothing new here. Did I know, and did a lot of people in this House, I presume, have been talking about health for a long time, know that when people have their procedures and an appointment for a procedure, they don't appear on the waiting list? I did. Did I know the size of that? No, I didn't. Did I know that there was a specific other list? No, I didn't. But what I'm concerned about are the people who don't have appointments for hospitals, who need procedures, who clinically need procedures, and getting that done as quickly as possible. We are going to make serious inroads, and it's, I didn't mean to just talk about scoliosis, Deputy Lahart, right across a range of issues. We're going to utilise the NTPF. We're going to use the capacity in our public hospital. We're going to hold our managers to account. And we're going to work cross-party, I hope, Thank you, to address these serious